One of the major questions for this unit is how do we categorize life? Uh, how do we um, put living things into different categories, into different taxonomic groups or taxa uh, that makes sense? How do we group them? Well, usually we do it according to uh, different characteristics that they have, perhaps different derived characteristics. Um, generally speaking, or the most general of these categories are the three domains. We're talking about the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya. We've talked about them previously. We've, uh, we've watched screencasts about them previously. If, if we delve in a little bit deeper into these domains, they're going to be broken up, living things are going to be broken up into six kingdoms beyond the three domains. And these six kingdoms fall as follows. Within the, three, within the domain bacteria, we have the kingdom eubacteria. Uh, these are all prokaryotic bacterial organisms. Within the domain archaea, we're talking about the kingdom archaebacteria. These are the extremophile bacterial organisms, both prokaryotic. Now, we move the rest, the rest of the four kingdoms, we're talking about eukaryotic organisms within the domain eukarya. We're talking about the protists, members of the kingdom protista, plantae, fungi, and animalia. So, generally speaking, that's why I put this up here, we're going to quickly go through kind of an overview of the six kingdoms. I'm not going to go too in-depth, just the, the major talking points of each of these kingdoms is what we're going to talk about. So, um, like I said, if you want to get more in-depth, I, uh, I have screencasts on these individually. But first, the kingdom U bacteria, we said they're prokaryotic which means they don't have a true nucleus, they have a nucleoid, they have circular um, genetic material, plasmids they can be used for, um, very useful in research. Uh, they're unicellular, they reproduce asexually, um, most of them are heterotrophic. We talked about the autotrophic cyanobacteria, which are why we are here, which are, is why the Cambrian explosion happened. Uh, they introduced oxygen into our atmosphere, created the ozone layer, etc. Most of them are helpful, as I said, um, with digestion in our guts. Some of them can live in extreme conditions. Um, they're not the extremophiles. We'll talk about the extremophiles when we talk about the archaebacteria. Uh, they're very useful in water purification, in water purification for water treatment plants and genetic engineering you can splice genes into a bacterial plasmid and have them make different proteins for you, different enzymes for you. Um, but some of them are harmful as well. We're talking about um, bacteria that cause strep throat, uh, bacteria that cause, uh, well there's the E. coli bacteria which can make you very sick, salmonella, um, chlamydia, can cause all kinds of problems. So while being helpful uh, in your gut to, to, to digest food, um, they can be harmful as well. They're classified according to their shape. They can be round, they can be rod shaped as these are, okay, and they can be spiral shaped, the spirochetes. The Archaebacteria, another prokaryotic kingdom, a member of the domain Archaea. They are also prokaryotic and unicellular and they reproduce asexually. These, on the other hand, are the extremophiles. They prefer extreme conditions. The methanophiles like to live where there's high levels of methane, like in swamps or in the guts of, of different ruminants. Um, they're very useful in digestion, however. That's why cows are able to, to digest grass and break down cellulose, whereas we can't. Uh, thermophiles like it hot, okay? Um, the selenophiles, they like a high salt content, like in the Great Salt Lake. Um, they're different from the archaebacteria, not only because they are extremophiles, but because they, they lack a, a particular peptidoglycan in their cell wall, a particular carbohydrate with a protein chain on it. And that sets them apart from the eubacteria, and it also makes them more closely related to us within the, the domain eukarya than they are to the eubacteria. The protists. The protists are a very, very diverse kingdom. Uh, it's a good chance that uh, in the near future the, the, the kingdom protista could be broken up into upwards of five kingdoms in itself. There are five proposed candidate kingdoms that it's possible um, 
that the, the, this could be split into further. They're eukaryotic. We've started, uh, we've transitioned into having a true nucleus in organelles, complex cells. Most of them are unicellular and aquatic. Uh, some are multicellular. Uh, they're colonial, such as algae. They can reproduce sexually and asexually. You can, you're going to see evidence of this extreme diversity. Look at the metabolism. They can absorb food. They can ingest it. So some are heterotrophic. Some are autotrophic. They can photosynthesize using the sun. Or they can chemosynthesize using chemicals to synthesize food. Some of them are plant-like, like the algae, for instance. The algae actually gave rise to plants. Some of them are animal-like protozoan, zo referring to animal, and some of them are fungus like the slime molds and water molds. Plants, still eukaryotic, uh, they're complex, they have a cell wall made of cellulose, um, multicellular, they can reproduce asexually, this is a, a version of, of reproduction called vegetative reproduction where a part of the original plant can become an entirely new organism, an entirely new plant. They can uh, reproduce sexually using seeds um, and pollen. They're autotrophic, as we've discussed. They can carry out photosynthesis in their chloroplasts. Um, different categories of plants. We're talking about uh, carophytes, very early plants, mosses, ferns, conifers, and the angiosperms, or the, the flowering plants. Fungi. They're eukaryotic as we continue through the, the domain eukarya complex cells. Their cell walls, as I jumped down a little bit, unlike the plants, the plants had cellulose in their cell walls. Fungi have chitin in their cell walls. Here's chitin. They're multicellular. They can reproduce sexually or asexually using spores. They're heterotrophic, uh, specifically they're saprotrophic, which means that they, um, they release enzymes that digest food outside their body and then they absorb the nutrients in. They're going to grow onto... Uh, they're going to grow on dead and decaying matter, typically where it's damp. Uh, mushrooms, mold, mildew, and shell fungus are examples of fungi. Finally, animalia. We complete the domain eukarya. We're talking eukaryotic, obviously, complex cells, multicellular, heterotrophic. Most animals can move. Uh, if you think of some of the uh, offshoot early animals, kind of the outgroup, the periphera, we're talking about the sponges, obviously they can't move, but they, they fulfill everything else in this category. They're heterotrophic. The animals, once again, very, very diverse. We're talking about the sponges, worms, insects, fish, frogs, turtles, birds, and mammals. So I told you it was going to be quick, um, kind of a brief overview of each of the kingdoms. If you're more interested in one in particular, there's a screencast on it. Thanks.